One of the biggest things that can make or break our image when it comes to color is an improper white balance. Because it's not always possible to shoot raw and it's not always possible to control our environment, I am giving to you guys today my advanced white balance tutorial, which is only available in my new DaVinci Resolve color grading course, which is now available for pre-order. You can pre-order the course at www.shopsydneybg.com. A link is in the description down below. There you will also find my brand new merch line designed for the creative entrepreneurs who know their worth. As an exclusive offer to you guys, my YouTube family, and to thank you for all the support you've given me, this course will be available for pre-order for only $30. After the pre-order is over, the prices will go up, so please be sure to go ahead and pre-order now so that you guys can save some money because I'm all about bringing affordable resources to you guys. All right, guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. And what I have for you guys right here is the image straight out of camera, just with the log curve correction. You can see here that our skin tones are just a little too magenta, and the blacks have this really cool tone to them, and even our highlights are a little too blue. So what we have a white balance issue, and because we're not shooting in raw, we're not going to be able to just use our temperature and our tint controls to correct that white balance. Our options are to use our eyedropper tool, right? Well, that's going to bring us to an image that looks like this. And now we can definitely see that we're even more far off than where we started. So what's happened is, is that yes, we have corrected the white balance for her black apron. This is a true white balance. But what we cannot see is the fact that there are really orange tungsten light bulbs above our barista. And we have these really big open windows letting in natural light. So we have a conflict between that blue light from the outside and that tungsten light on the inside, which is going to make it hard for us to grade. So what we can do is we can use the power of our curves tools to balance the image and make it a little bit more true to life and correct your skin tones. Let me show you how we do that. So now we have our waveform up right here. So in order to correct our log image, we're gonna take this lower IRE value and drag it down using the black point on the curve right before it hits zero IRE. So just barely touching zero IRE. And then we're gonna take our white point and expand that information right before it hits 100 IRE. So now we've corrected the contrast. All we have to do now is correct the saturation and then our log correction will be finished. I know with my camera, when I shoot with the profile I use, I need about 90.8. It will change depending on what camera you have. So here we are. We have now brought this problem to life. The next thing we can do is add another node. And this node is going to be specifically for our white balance. Now, in order to do any type of white balance corrections using the curves, we're going to need to use our parade. So you can access this here by coming into the parade. And now you can see here that we have all of our color information on different spectrums, but we can see our issue. This zero IRE value for the red isn't corresponding with the green or the blue. And some of our information in here isn't corresponding with each other. As a matter of fact, in the blue channel, it's highly compressed. And then our white points for each of these channels is also off. So we're gonna go through and do some advanced correction for all of those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna unlock all of these and we're gonna start by selecting individual channels. First channel I'm gonna correct is our green channel. I'm going to start by dragging that down until it meets the red channel. So then we're going to come into our blue channel and we're going to make an adjustment until that evens up with the rest of them. So about right there is what we're going to do. Now for our white points, you can see the parts of the red channel are actually clipping and they're right at the zero IRE line. So we're just going to drag this red channel down just a smidge. Kind of bring it in line with that green channel. Then we're gonna take our blue channel and we're going to bring it up and try to get it just to right about where it would be even. So now what we need to do is we need to start expanding this information 
that is in these certain areas. We know that this blue channel has some highly compressed information. So I'm going to drag that down to try to relieve some of that information. You see how it's starting to come down right there? But then we have to adjust our white point back to where it is. We're just going to bring that right back there. So for the record, this is a completely fine image, if that's what you're going for. I think it really does kind of show more of that tungsten light in the, the shop that I was in. But I really like that neutral black, maybe even pushing a cooler tone on the black. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust for that now. We can see this blue information down here is really, really compressed also compared to these two values. So let's go ahead and push that blue information up a little bit higher. I'm gonna come down here and push that up first. And then we're gonna bring it even closer to the line right around this area. It's kind of really expanded our information in here. And now we're gonna compress these values so that we get that balance. So let's go into our red. And we're gonna drag down right about here because it's in the shadows. Now remember, the only reason I'm choosing where I drag down up here and up here is because I know over here is my shadows, right here is my midtones, over here is my highlights, and then whites and blacks are at the very end. So that's all I'm doing is adjusting the colors where I see them. So I knew I wanted to bring down those values that were compressed in the sh that were expanded in the shadows actually. So we're going to go ahead and do the corresponding values in the shadows. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push this red value right back up there. So here we can go ahead and look at it before and after. And you can see our image is looking pretty good. Everything as far as the machine goes, the countertops, we have those blue highlights, which I'm okay with because this is not a raw image. But one of the funky things here is the skin tones. And you can see that our skin tones are different here than they are here. So we're gonna go ahead and add another node and just finish up this color balancing grade using the power of Resolve. And we're gonna go into our vector scope Make sure our skin tone indicator is selected. And we're gonna go into our qualification tab. We're gonna select our skin tone. And then we're gonna turn on our highlight selection. And now we're just gonna clean up that qualification, make sure we have all of our skin tone selected. And so now that this is just selected, we can see the difference in the fingers and in the arms. So I'm gonna clean up this qualification a little bit by increasing the low soft. And I'm gonna go and turn on a power window. So here we can see her arm is pretty much balanced correctly. What we need to worry about is her arm, which is way off of this skin tone indicator. So I know here we're gonna have to drag down some green and we're gonna use the offset and the log wheels to do that. And we're gonna push it into the green until it's right on there. So now her hands are fine, but do you see her, now her arm is off. We're then going to go into our shadows because what we have here is the difference between the highlights and the shadows. So we're going to go into the shadows of our log wheel now. And we're going to push a magenta color to neutralize that. And now we can see our hands are a little bit more balanced, much better balanced. And then we can go in here and add some saturation to bring those arms to life. And that's it. This is where we start it, this is where we end it, this is without our white balance corrections, and this is with our skin tone corrections to neutralize those skin tones. I'm fine with a little bit more of the green hints being in there. I think it kind of adds to the rustic feel. But remember, all in all, this is what we started with was an image that would have been white balanced like this. This is really important for you guys who shoot events, wedding events and corporate events, where they're using those colored lights that can really throw off your image tones. You're going to be able to go into Resolve, individually shift those color channels to get your overall image where you want it, and more importantly, get your skin tones where you want them. As you can see, the Curves tool in DaVinci Resolve is super powerful when it comes to color balancing your image. If you like explanations like this that are quick but also in-depth, be sure to go and pre-order my course, 
The link is in the description down below. And also be sure to head to my new store and check out my merch. The link is also in the description down below. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. Remember, if you are ever feeling uninspired or uncreative or just wanna give up on life, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.